Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Wet Pixel, and I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Uh, Alex in Snells. Yeah, yeah. Getting into the photo. It's actually taken with the Z7 and the oh, wow. WACP2, which I know you'd like, um, on, Very... on the sandbar this year in Cayman. Very techy. It feels like Wonderful. about three lifetimes ago, but it was yeah. this year. Yeah. So what we thought we might talk about today um, is we might talk a bit about almost a genre of images that's kind of fallen out of fashion. Um, and that once upon a time when you looked at underwater images, most of the underwater images were really focusing on scuba divers in the water. Um, mm -hmm. And now if you go onto groups like the Wet Pixel Facebook group or anywhere else where there's, where there's a lot of underwater imagery, imagery displayed, it often the, the, the focus seems to be much more towards marine life rather than people. So I thought, first of all, Alex, I, I would sort of pass the question over to you as I always do. Um, you know, why do you think that we're now not taking pictures of scuba dives anymore and taking pictures mm -hmm. of, of marine creatures instead? I think it, it, it's really it is a really interesting observation that, mm. you know, if you, um, you know, picked up a, a scuba, you know, if you picked up Skin Diver magazine, yep, in, you know, in the it. 80s, you know, it, you know, the majority of pictures were people underwater. I think mm. part of it was that in the early days of scuba diving, the most amazing thing that you could see underwater was a human being being underwater. That was mm. an amazing story. And people were drawn to capture that. And that's perhaps seen as much less of an amazing thing by today's photographers. But I, I, I personally think those pictures remain really valuable to take because while underwater photographers look at other underwater photographers and go, well, we all know people go underwater. It still is an amazing thing for the general population to do. And it Absolutely. is a pity that more photographers don't put more effort into taking these types of pictures. There are many modern exceptions. Um, Ken Kiefer, who you you know did those fantastic talks here on Wet Pixel Live, you know he's a Kimber. modern yeah. example of a you know a contemporary photographer who who very much specialises in this area, and and there you know there are plenty of others um, who you know built whole careers from this. But on the whole, I would say that the majority of most un of underwater photographers operating these days are not particularly interested in photographing divers. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I, I really enjoy myself because I find it a really interesting challenge. I think I think the, I'd like to just sort of touch back. I mean, I, I remember avidly reading Skin Diver in the 80s um, and, and sort of into the 90s. And, and the, the I, I'm not sure what his title was, but one of the, the major contributors, certainly, of imagery was Stephen Frink. And, and sort of Stephen mm. Frink's imagery of that period, which was very much focused on, on, on divers in the environment, um, and you know, um, and, and to the extent that they even played with the colours that the divers were wearing, and so on and so forth. I mean, that was a very kind of a, a very productive time, I think, for underwater photography. Um, and it, you know, mm. he spent a lot of time um, m trying to make people look beautiful in the underwater environment, mm. and, and, and achieve that too, of course. Um, so, yeah. so he, it's a really <laughs> seminal kind of photographer for mm. this type of photography. I think another reason why divers were such a popular subject back then was the camera equipment too. In that, you know, you know, if you were Stephen Frink or Jerry Murphy or whoever going off on assignment shooting with the Nikonos 5 as the main camera, the Nikonos 5 and the 15mm wide angle lens was the thing it was best at photographing were divers. So that probably yeah. also drove that. And then with the publications demanding that, it, you know, it was probably, you know, some sort of, of circle. And it tended to be more in books that you saw more of the natural history type subjects. And mm. obviously there wasn't that big outlet for images that of the internet that there is now so mm. in terms of getting your work published and what the equipment was good at doing you know it probably led to a lot of that i do think though that you know people photography has fallen out of fashion underwater and mm. i think that is a loss for our community because there is you know no better advert for wanting to get people interested in going underwater than seeing other people going underwater you know it makes it accessible uh and, and I think it's a, it is, it is a, a loss, but it's also an opportunity. I think, um, you know, well shot imagery. And I think, I think certainly, you know, Ken and Kimber's creations is a good example mm. of this. You know, it really is very eye catching, gets a great deal of attention um, because it is different from, from what the majority of federal <laughs> publishers are doing. Yeah, um, it's funny, isn't it? You know, you know, the, yeah. the overdone, you know, 
type of image of one generation is the is the is the rarity of the next is the unicorn of the next yeah absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and, it's, and and that's you know something the reason that i enjoy doing it is partly you know for selling it in that you know scuba diving magazines depending on where they are around the world this is a you know cover of a british magazine from this year you know yeah. scuba diving magazines around the world still use those images i'd say the majority of titles around the world these days don't run people pictures on the covers they tend to run um, marine life pictures but there's still plenty certainly the uk is probably the, the strongest hotbed for it where it seems every scuba diving magazine has to have a person on the front i would say yeah. most of the rest of the world it's very rare to see people on the covers of, the, of magazines um i think we do still photograph people in our pictures underwater but we typically use them as a, a compositional support a, a background interest in scenic pictures you know it's much more common to use a, a diver in the background of a shot rather right. than wanting to light them up and make them part of the picture partly because right. that's much easier from a modeling point of view to model in the background of a picture partly because yeah. i think you know taste wise people maybe want the picture to be much more about the reef and not the person yeah. um and but i i, I actually I, i've done quite a bit of this photography recently yeah. And I've really enjoyed it because it you have to get so many things right to get the picture to work. I would yep. say it's some of the hardest underwater pictures that I've taken to get all those details right in terms of you've got to light a, you know, you've got to find an, a suitable bit of the environment to photograph. You've yep. then got to position the model in a way that's going to work in the composition. You've then yep. got to light both the, the reef and them properly. And then you've got to time that picture to get their position right and their pose right, their eye line right, their bubbles right, how they're dressed right, you know, for the for the client, for the for the use of the picture. And yeah. I find actually getting all of those things right in a picture makes it far harder than taking a super macro picture of a critter. Yet yeah, which... to your peers, the super macro picture is loved far more than any diver shot. So yeah, yeah. but I, I, I personally found it very enjoyable. I worked with Ivana Olovich, who's a who's a a model in uh, in Anadolu a few years ago, and and it was you know the, the the it's not just the photography. This is the point. You know the model themselves, they have to get themselves right and you. So you've almost got lots and lots of moving parts to try and get. Now she she and, and many of these models are very good at it, um, and actually you know they do make our jobs a bit easier because they're so good at making themselves look attractive underwater. But but um. Oh, but the the um, you know the other part and it is it is as you say so many moving parts so many different things to to to, to balance. Um, I typically take those shots not looking through the viewfinder, right. so I typically take the model shots with wide angle lens, fisheye lens on. You know I'm very good at aiming my camera from the hip. I'm very confident on the composition, and I much prefer to watch the scene with my own eyes and shoot slightly blind. Once I've, you know, I've taken some shots, know my lighting's right, know if my camera is in this space here, it's going to light everything right. I know the framing. Mm. But actually, for the actual shots, I'll often look over the top of the camera so that I can watch the model's eye line. Looking through a viewfinder, through a fisheye lens, I can't see those details yeah. where, you know, whereas over the top of the camera, I can look at the model. And I tend to also get a better interaction with the model. Yeah when i'm interacting with them rather than my camera lens interacting they can still see the camera lens they can still see the reflection in the dome um and, and that sort of thing but yeah. it's yeah it, i prefer to have that over the top and, and watch them and shoot that way as opposed to look through the viewfinder to shoot yeah um I, 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 one of the recent projects i've done shooting for this was with a diving guide to the the cayman islands yep. that's just just came out th this week um, and it's called, um, maybe you can pull the cover up, actually, because it's one of my people pictures on the cover. Wonderful. It's probably quite a good place to start. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it's called um, Reef Smart Guides. And actually, the company that do these, I wasn't really particularly involved at all in the in the dive guide. And this book is a, is a, is a massive, great, thumping Bible of, a, of detail. It is an incredible piece of work. And my pictures are just a very small part of it. But they actually have 3D scanned all the dive sites or a lot of the key dive sites around Cayman and actually present completely accurate topography maps at a scale that divers can relate to. Wow. So you can see all the swim throughs. You can see the key coral, coral heads in these 3D maps. They're, they're fantastic. And my picture is just a small part of this, um, of, of the book. Um, but it, it was a very interesting experience doing this photography 
um, throughout. And um, if I open up, I, I took some photos of some of the spreads here to show you. So the first spread is from a dive site at the east end of Cayman called Snapper Hole. It's actually one of my favorite dive sites. And what was interesting about this shoot is that generally I didn't have a whole dive on a dive site. We were trying to do as many sites as possible in a short period of time. Yep. And so I was doing about 15 minute dives on these dive sites. Wow. So but, and the aim of the photography was to photograph properly, you know, classic, very recognizable features of the dive site so that when scuba divers saw the picture and went on the dive, they would be, yes, that is the experience I had. I didn't, it wasn't about creating an artistic picture that, you know, it had to feel like, yes, that was the dive I was on. Yeah. Um, and so that made the, the photography, you know, really quite challenging. And I work with um, Sam is modeling in these pictures here. Um, I don't um, have a relationship with any sort of professional underwater model. So I typically re rely when I do this type of picture on working with dive staff in the places I go. Mm. The good thing about dive staff is they're normally brilliant divers, got amazing buoyancy. Mm. They know the dive site, so they're not desperate to do anything other than do their job you know they're not oh, oh wow it's a uh, you know a fish over there i've never seen you know so they're they're kind of focused on it yeah um and typically they've got you know good suntan they're they're you know in, in good in the water and that sort of thing which which can help the photos yeah and because these pictures were taken to promote um diving in a tropical destination then the clients were keen that the divers looked like you know they were diving in warm water so no big thick black wetsuit and black hood you know it's it's a holiday diving destination as well yep. so they you know, wanted to get that feel for it yep. um and, and 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 capture that in the pictures and i think the one of the challenges is that you know the diver is part of a bigger scene and that makes the lighting really challenging you know you're trying to light up really quite large sections of reef with and still light a person up, even though they're not that close to the, the front of the picture. And that's, I think, really interesting. Right. Um, I'm going to show you the, the next picture. So, sorry, I'm going to, yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to the, so to the next when, you, yeah. when you mentioned lighting, did you use more than two strobes or was that just two big strobes? No, or? typically just two strobes, but I was using my big C-cam flashes, yeah. which, you know, and running them. A lot of this, they shoot, I'm shooting them either at full power, three quarter power, right. but right up at the top. Right. And yeah, on these days when we were doing out and doing these shoots, you know, like taking every spare battery I've got because you're not shooting that many frames because you're doing quite short dives. But, but big every dumps. shot is, yeah, it's you having to put a lot of strobe light onto because the aim was to catch a big vista. So the next one is at Kangaroo Gorge. Yeah. And this is a wall site which has got these pinnacles on the edge of the wall. And we wanted to capture these pinnacles on the top of the wall. That's a key feature of the site. Yeah. Um, and the deep. And you're trying to do lots of dives in a day. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to show the scale here. So here, um, this is Sam modeling again. She's a little bit further back in the in the picture this time. Um, and one thing we were doing on this shoot is we were changing clothes on the model every dive. Right. So although these pictures are often all taken on the same day because the nature of a professional shoot, I didn't want them to look like one guy went to a dive destination with his model and here's the same person again and again. So the aim is that, you know, you don't immediately go, oh, it's that same person again. Yep. You look through the book and it looks like a different diver. Yep. And, you know, I did, you did work with different dive staff yep. um, while we were doing this. Um, but it was, and, and the, 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 the pictures today were all girls, but I shot quite a lot of boys as well yep. um, in the pictures. Um, right, so the, the next picture is Valley of the Dolls, the dive site here. Yep. Um, and this is a, a wall site again. And, you know, one of the difficulties in, in doing this is, you know, it's quite a lot of relatively short, deep dives too, because the good stuff tends to be at the deeper end of the dive site. So yeah, yeah. you're going deep, needing to work relatively fast, trying not to fill up your computer because you want to do seven, eight dives in a day mm. um, and do it safely. Mm. And so, you know, those are the challenges of these shoots in, 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 the, in the logistics side of it mm. when covering all the dive sites. It's not, oh, just stay shallow and spend eight hours shooting model. It's go down within two minutes, get a shot so you can start coming up again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and shots that also capture the the key feature of the site that a dive is going to be most. So this site's got these lovely deep water sea fans. Yeah. Um, this is Diane modeling here. And and generally when work, Diane actually is not a dive staff. She's, she was um, just, um, a friend of, of, of the people at the dive center and was free from work that day. Never, you know, not particularly experienced diver. Um, but, you know, you know, 
nice in the water. Position, yeah. And the easiest thing when working with a model like that, that who isn't experienced, is to give them simple things to do. You know, sex, if I want them in a certain place, I don't say go to that place. I say go over there and swim over here, knowing that will take them through where I want them. Mm. And then they'll typically be, be comfortable by the time they get to the shot. And then I can, with hand gestures, direct their eye line. Mm. Because eye line is very important. It's one of those details that's really important. You don't want the diver staring down the lens like this. You want them looking at the you know the stuff that the viewer is enjoying in the picture. Yeah. So here, they've, um, Diane's face is facing the camera enough so I can light it up. But she's looking back at the at the at, at, at the subject matter that's dominating the scene. And this is and, and that classic rule. This, kind of. this is something that's you know we use the models eye direction to draw the viewer's eye direction and this is a, a much loved um tool, uh, creative tool as well as to use a light and again they shine the light towards where you mm. want that whether you want the viewer's eye to be drawn towards so so whatever mm. the actual subject of the frame is um yeah, i mean an important compositional tool and a, a creative tool for for shooting with divers yeah sure yeah so in this particular shoot we didn't want to use lights no, no. because it goes against that you know if you're trying yeah. to say tropical dive destination it's not you know the same way we weren't using hoods yeah Okay, um, the next picture is a dive site called The Maze. Um, and this picture here, um, the diver's Carly, um, this site's a really amazing site in that at the edge of the wall, there's these very, very deep canyons that run in from the wall. And it's almost like doing a double wall dive at the same time. Yeah. And the, the local, um, my, my friend um, Stephen Broadback, who's the, um, uh, owns, one of the owners of the local diving center there, he's had this picture in mind. He said, you know, this is the picture that captures this dive site and he's had it in mind for 20 years and no one's ever taken it and you know he just said he sent me underwater saying this is the picture i want go and take it um and so we went down and took it that was it that was easy then <laughs> it, it, it just captures exactly what that dive site is like mm. and no one had ever captured the scale of, you know particularly you don't know how you can see on the screen but the water just drops down this you know this great chasm mm. um below um, and it was, yeah, it, it's quite diff it was quite difficult working in that environment, you mm. know, and getting it all right, getting the eye line right um, and everything like that. So it all worked well. Right. I'm going to just fire through the last couple. Um, the last couple are on shallower sites. Um, this is a, a site, one called Fish Tank. And, you know, the Cayman Islands aren't a mega fishy destination, mm. but there are dive sites with plenty of fish on. Mm. And I think getting marine life that can swim and divers into a frame adds another moving element. Yep. And yeah, this and, and then trying to shoot a really large section of reef like this, all lit up. You know, there's there's a big area and a model behind. You know, this is an extensive shot. Yeah. So it really takes quite a lot. You know, I was using sort of a semi rabbit ears lighting setup, yep. strobes really high, yep. getting the the model in the right position. Um, to be interacting with the subject matter, yep. um, getting the eye line working. You know, there's a lot to sort of line up in this particular picture. You can see with the semi-rabbit eyes, you can see you managed to catch the model's eyes. You know, you've got the light in their eyes, and that's um, that, you know, the only way you can do that is by throwing the strobe like really far forward, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, I think this particular frame, she's actually just looking up at me. Right. Um, so, you know, you you know, because obviously the models, you know, very common that a model is checking the photographer all the time. Yeah. And so here she's not really, I think she had a good body pay shape and she's facing the right direction. But just at the moment I press the shutter, her eyes flick to the camera. Yeah. But actually, I think it works OK here because the um, it's, I know, but those are the sort of details that you're, you're trying to constantly, you know, work against. And, you know, they can breathe out just at the wrong moment. Yep. I'm very, I, I quite like bubbles in the picture, but not when they're going across your face like yep. Father Christmas's beard. OK. And, and the final one I was going to show today is this one, High Rock Drop Off. This is a, another wall site in Cayman, mm. but the top of the wall in this area is very rich. And actually, I wanted to feature, or you know, we discussed, and we wanted to feature the very rich corals that grow on top of the reef yep. in, in this in this area. And um, staghorn coral is one of the corals in the Caribbean that you know didn't do well post white band disease. Yep. So seeing healthy stands of this, it was really good photographically. It's beautiful, yeah. I have to say though, it's a fairly low squat coral. So although it was a really important subject, it was actually very difficult to find an angle that worked for this. And, you know, it can be amazing when you suddenly can't choose your photographic subject based on what will make a good picture. You need to shoot a, a subject because it's important for the story. It makes the photography a lot harder. And right. this was a real challenge to find an angle that would work with something that was basically a carpet with a, a diver above it. 
um, and make all that work visually in a picture. And I think we got there in the end on this, but I remember this being quite challenging to get lighting, to get the model lit, to, to get the composition to work. And I think that's one of the um, satisfying things of doing this type of photography is it throws you challenges you're not used to dealing with in, in a lot of our underwater photography, mm. and that can make it very satisfying to do. So mm. although this type of photography has dropped from fashion, for me, it, rem it I think it's some of the most satisfying underwater photography you can do. And I definitely encourage more people to, to give photographing scuba divers a go. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Alex. Um, so, so obviously these images are in the book. What was the, sorry, the title of which was, there it is. And the title of it is um, Reef Smart Guides Grand Cayman. Wonderful. Um, yeah. and, and so that's, that's available via Amazon. On Amazon, and, yeah. And everywhere Certainly else, in the US, it's easy yeah. to get hold of. You can, I, I, I actually ordered that copy here in the U, in the UK. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is Seacam. So thanks to Seacam for sponsoring the episode. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add any comments in the comment section below and to drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Many thanks. I look forward to seeing you again too.